Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Recently we've been talking lots about the future of Dodge and Chrysler, covering lots of topics like the new 2024 Ram 1500, the all new Dodge E muscle car, and the Chrysler Airflow. Today we're talking more about the new 3 liter turbocharged inline 6 cylinder engine, going over everything that we know so far. This engine hasn't exactly been a secret and there have been rumors and details swirling for years now. Just this past week, Stellantis revealed new details about some of the horsepower and features of these engines, so I wanted to cover it. Anyways, let's get right into it. So the engine we're talking about, of course, is the all-new 3.0-liter global medium engine turbocharged inline 6-cylinder, or GME T6 for short. At first, the codename Tornado was going around related to this engine, but now it seems to continue the Hurricane name as it is based on the current 2.0-liter GME T4 inline 4-cylinder version that is currently found in several vehicles like the Jeep Wrangler and Cherokee, and there's also another version of it, the Giorgio, that's found in the Alfa Romeo Giulia and Stelvio. The whole purpose of this engine is to replace some of the current gas engines, like the 3.6-liter Pentastar V6, and the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with something that has better fuel economy numbers and perhaps more power as well. Back on November 22nd, 2021, Stellantis confirmed that they had begun production of this engine. Stellantis had a press release for their Saltillo engine plant in Ramos Arizpe, Coahuila in Mexico. They had posted a fact sheet that included the new engine details, but quickly changed the information and backtracked their steps. The 1.2 million square foot Saltillo plant currently also manufactures the engine lineup of Hemi's, including the 5.7 liter, 6.4 liter Apache and big gas engines, 6.2 liter Hellcat, and 6.2 liter high output motors. There will be three versions of this engine, standard output, high output, and plug-in hybrid electric form. So as for some new information, there were lots of rumors about this engine and it had many delays getting to production, but finally Stellantis will fully reveal the high output version of the GME T6, at the New York International Auto Show next month in April. This marks the first inline six cylinder that's under the hood of a Chrysler product since the four liter inline six was discontinued in 2006. The first vehicle to debut with this engine will be the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Just this week, some people noticed that when building a Grand Wagoneer on the online configurator, there was suddenly this engine upgrade with a picture of the new three liter engine. It was listed as engine upgrade for $2,000 on all four Grand Wagoneer models, so Series 1, 2, 3, and Obsidian. Stellantis quickly took down this image and option after the news broke, so that's the second time they've either accidentally posted something and taken it down after, or just teased it publicly. And a few days ago, Stellantis also revealed some new details about the Hurricane engines that people have been waiting for for a long time. The Hurricane features a cast aluminum block and cylinder head, with a dual overhead camshaft design, four valves per cylinder, direct injection, and variable intake and camshaft timing. The turbochargers are low inertia, high flow models. Each feeds three cylinders, which increases the responsiveness. The engine has direct fuel injection with a single pump for the standard output model and twin pumps for the high output model. Other features include an aluminum oil pan, steel connecting rods, and steel crankshaft. As we suspected, it is quite similar to the turbocharged 2.0-liter GME T4 with the same bore, stroke, and cylinder spacing. Incoming air is cooled by an engine-mounted intercooler before it enters the intake manifold, making the air denser, which helps for better performance. An electric pump is also used to cool the turbochargers after the engine is shut off. Each engine comes standard with start-stop technology. Stellantis also claims they're using a new technology on this engine that's done at the Saltillo plant, where they apply a low friction coating on the cylinder walls that's called plasma transfer wire arc. This process melts a steel alloy wire at 2300 degrees Celsius or 4150 degrees Fahrenheit, which sprays steel onto the cylinder walls at a high velocity, and the particles form a physical bond to the aluminum cylinder surface. It is then honed for a fine cross hatch pattern for oil retention. This creates a durable finish that's 10 times more wear resistant than a cast iron coating. This eliminates the need for cylinder liners. The process is more compact than iron liners and leaves more aluminum between the cylinders for heat transfer and cooling. That allows for a wider spark advance range and optimized air fuel mixture. Stellantis already confirmed that there will be three versions of this engine, standard output, high output, and plug-in hybrid electric form. Now we do know more about the first two. The standard output will have over 400 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque with 22 PSI of boost. It uses die-cast aluminum pistons, cast iron top rings, and a 10.4 to 1 compression ratio. Premium fuel is recommended, but not required. 
We will have to wait until 2024 to see this engine, but with power like that, the standard output surely seems on track to replace the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 when it comes out in a few years, or at least be offered as an alternative to the 5.7 liter Hemi with e-torque that they currently offer right now. On this standard output, the torque is distributed over a wider part of the RPM curve, so the engine should accelerate quicker than the 5.7 Hemi would while delivering better fuel economy. The high output version steps things up, with Stellantis saying that it will deliver over 500 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque, and for the Grand Wagoneer specifically, the horsepower number is 507. Again, that's the engine that we saw on the build configurator, and it's also the engine that will be found under the hood of the Grand Wagoneer at the New York Auto Show next month in April. The high output is twin turbocharged, with two smaller turbochargers spinning and providing boosts faster than the same engine with a larger single-mounted turbocharger. This version has a redline of 6100 RPM and 26 PSI of boost, and features forged aluminum pistons, an anodized top ring, diamond-like coating on the pins, and a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. For the Grand Wagoneer, 90% of the peak torque in the high output will be delivered before 2350 RPM. The high output does require premium 91 octane fuel, unlike the standard output which is only recommended, but they claim that the increase in fuel economy will offset the higher price, with up to 15% better gas mileage than the current bigger gas engines. With these kind of power numbers, over 500 horsepower, the high output could very well replace the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 as well. There's no confirmation about transmission details that are paired with this engine right now for other vehicles, but we do know that for the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, it will be paired with the 8HP75 8 8-speed 8 torque flight automatic transmission. There is a third version of this engine as well, that would be the plug-in hybrid electric version, but we don't know too much about that right now. Speculation currently says that the engine would have north of 525 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque with electric motor assist. For that, we probably have to wait until 2024 to see it, along with the standard output version. So production of this new engine is already underway at the Saltillo plant in Mexico. Many expect that this engine will eventually be rolled out to other North American products, like the next generation Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and even the Ram 1500. The turbocharged six-cylinder does seem like a stepping stone for Stellantis as they aim for their 50% battery electric vehicle sales mix by the year 2030. So the internal combustion engines are not going away just yet, but they may not be the Hemi V8s that we've grown to be familiar with. So that's it for today. What do you think of the new 3-liter GME T6 engine details? Let me know down in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for all your Mopar news and content, and I'll see you all in the next video.